Welcome, folks. I'm Jabby Kowei, joined by Chara Kirk. What's up? We are watching She-Hulk Pitch Meeting from Pitch Meeting's YouTube channel. Thanks so much for joining us. Please do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon, all notifications. Vote this up. Let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. While you subscribe and upvoting, subscribe to Pitch Meeting. There's a link in the description below. You can click on that. Give the original upvote. Subscribe to them from there. Also, full disclosure, Achara did enjoy She-Hulk. I watched She-Hulk. Okay. <sighs> Here we go. Wow. Listen, I didn't like love, love, love it. It's not my favorite love, Marvel love, love. show. Love, love, No. Okay. It was, it was, there were some great funny moments. There yeah. was some funny moments. Yeah. And then there was the rest of it. Okay, here we go. So, you have some new Disney Plus content for me? Yes, sir, I do. Although I am kind of worried we might be oversaturating people with Marvel stuff at the moment. Maybe we should take a breather between projects for a sec. No. Well, yeah. okay, then. So I was making my way down the list of Marvel characters we haven't brought into the MC. To be fair, there was a bit of a lull during pandemic, right? A little bit. The only thing that released that I recall is Black Widow. And then Shang-Chi eventually came out after Black Widow. Or no, was it Eternals? I can't remember anymore. What about but like WandaVision and Loki and all of that? I guess you're right. My way down the list of Marvel characters we haven't brought into the MCU yet, and I was thinking we could make a She-Hulk show. Oh yeah, we haven't done that character yet. That sounds like money to me. Yeah, and it's a real fun character, because in the comics, she was breaking the fourth wall even before Deadpool. You know, I can see that working well in Deadpool movies or comic books, but do you think it might lower the impact of the overall MCU to have a character that knows that they're in a cinematic universe? Hey, shut up. So we're going to meet <laughs> Jennifer yeah. Walters, who's a lawyer and also Bruce Banner's cousin. He's from the movie. He sure is, sir. And so they get into a car accident and she gets some of his blood in her blood. Oh, unexpected blood combos are tight. Ew. Okay, and so since yeah. they're related, she turns into a Hulk as well. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Wow. And so Bruce is going to show her some cool stuff about being a Hulk. Like, you can drink alcohol and not get drunk. Why would you want that? Pretty cool, right? <laughs> not really. And so he's going to teach her and try to guide her through these new powers, and she's going to Wait, isn't that a misunderstanding of her power? Well, she does get drunk. It's a, well, that's <coughs> the, She just the doesn't joke. have hangovers. She can drink a lot more when she is the Hulk. So, yeah, you don't really get drunk. Which, I agree, sort of defeats the purpose. I'm very happy that I'm a cheap date. That you only need to give me, like, two drinks and yeah. I'm... I'm happily buzzed. And so he's gonna teach her and try to guide her through these new powers and she's gonna kind of make fun of him and insult him, so that's gonna be fun. That kind of makes her seem a little rude and mean. He's just trying to help her because he cares about her. Well, she doesn't really want his help, plus she's already kind of mastered the whole Hulk thing already. Oh, she has? Yes, sir. She's already fantastic and agile and she could turn into She-Hulk at will without losing control of herself at all. How is that possible? I feel like it took Bruce a long time to master all that. Well, Jen explains to Bruce that because she's been catcalled and mansplained to, and some men are straight up dangerous, <laughs> she's much better at controlling her anger than Bruce because she's had to do it infinitely more than he has. Okay, yeah, no, I mean, I see what she's saying, and in no way do I want to belittle what women have to go through at all. Careful. But also, yeah. she's saying this to Bruce Banner, who saved the planet multiple times and lost his best friend and his love interest and was turned into a monster and chased by governments and turned into a gladiator slave on an alien planet and tried to take his own life. It's like, of all people, Bruce. Yeah, okay, so I hear what you're saying, and it's actually not okay for you to point that out. Oh, okay, my bad. Uh, it's too late. You're on a list now. You can't have any opinions about this show without being classified as being on one extreme of a very complicated issue. Wow. Ah, dang it. I hate being on lists. So anyway. What he just pointed out is one of the best observations about She-Hulk, which is you can't be in the middle for some reason, which I am. It's like, it was fine. It was all right. I didn't hate it. I didn't think it was the worst show ever, but I didn't think it was the greatest show either. And the fact that so many people decided that you had to take a side, either it was amazing or the worst. I'm like, that's stupid. It wasn't great. It was mediocre. It was right. fine. But it seems like if you speak out about it or any of the shortcomings that you may have with it, especially if it has anything to do with the more... Political. Yeah, political, feminist, whatever yeah. side of the show, then automatically it's because, oh, well, you're sexist and you're one of those awful internet trolls that we're, like, talking about in this show, well, you know? What he pointed out in his little monologue about everything Hulk went through, that's a keen observation that a lot of the internet was also making. And I'm like, yeah, 
But the show could have saved itself had it closed that gap between Jen declaring she knows it all and Jen realizing she doesn't. Because right. like that came way late it in came, the show. Yeah, way, way late. And I hate being on lists. So anyway, Jen goes back to her life as a lawyer and during a trial, a super powered influencer, which is a thing in the MCU, <laughs> apparently burst through the wall. Uh -oh. And so then towards the end of the first episode, Jen's going to turn into She-Hulk and everyone's going to learn that she has powers. Wow. And so what else do we find out in the first episode? Oh, well, you know Captain America? Yeah. He put his pee, -pee in a lady. What? <laughs> then Jen gets fired from her lawyer job and gets hired at another firm to start like a superhero law division. Okay, so this becomes kind of like a lawyer show. Ah, kinda. Sometimes. A little. Do you know how to write courtroom scenes? Nope, and then so also it's gonna be kind of <laughs> a slice of life kind of show. Like Jen's gonna go on dates and stuff. Right, okay, does she also fight crime or? Eh, not so much. So like, what? Yeah. What happens? Oh, well, stuff. You know, sometimes. All right, is there, can you, you gotta give me something, please. Oh, well, at a certain point, she's gonna represent Emil Blonsky, so that's gonna be pretty cool. I don't think I know who that is. Remember, you know, he was in the movie, the, the 14 years ago, he was in the movie. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, no, it wasn't a super <laughs> memorable character, but yeah. Well, that doesn't really matter, to be honest, because he's just a completely different character now. Oh, okay, great, it's all connected. It's also, Wong is gonna show up sometimes. He's from the movies. He is, and he's gonna become friends with this girl, Madison. And what's her deal? She's always drunk and she's She's the absolute best part of the show. Yes. Nice. Also, at a certain point, She-Hulk is gonna twerk with Megan the Stallion. What? Superheroes don't usually twerk. <laughs> exactly. So people are gonna be like, what? And then other people are gonna be, you know, deeply angry about it. Oh mm -hmm. my God, what? You know, see, that's gonna be kind of a thing in the show. We're gonna kind of rile up angry internet dudes and then make fun of them for getting riled up. That's gonna be really good for the state of internet discourse, yeah. Yeah, that's gonna help with all the toxicity online, I'm pretty sure. So any interesting yeah. plot threads or anything I should know about? Before he jumps into that, the, th the whole thing about Abomination, to be fair, they reintroduced Abomination with Shang-Chi. Yes. It, like, if you didn't know who he was because you didn't watch The Incredible Hulk, you would have at least been ex exposed to him from Shang-Chi. Like, let's say you're only following the movies and She-Hulk is the first show you jump into. You wouldn't be entirely lost about who that guy is. Maybe somewhat lost, but not entirely lost. Well, having recently watched your reaction to the Incredible Hulk, yes, he was a completely different character then. But then I had to think about it and I'm like, that was 14 years ago. Was I the same exact same person as I was then? Absolutely. Probably not. <laughs> Any interesting plot threads or anything I should know about? Oh, there's like this group of toxic dudes that call themselves Intelligentsia, and they're trying to get some of She-Hulk's blood. Oh boy, I bet that's gonna come into play later. <laughs> the hell was that noise? It was <laughs> Oh yeah, I heard it. What did it mean though? Well, see, we're gonna get to the finale and it's gonna be set up like a big Marvel showdown, you know? Oh, okay. So there's gonna be this toxic dude that turns into a Hulk and then Bruce shows up and Abomination's there and it's gonna be this big showdown type thing. Uh-oh, gonna be hard for her to get out of that situation. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. <laughs> Barely an inconvenience. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, see, Jen is gonna break the fourth wall and be like, is this working for anyone? Okay. She's gonna be like, this is kind of crappy, right? Where this show's going, it's not good. That's, we're making the show. <laughs> we are, yeah. So then she's gonna go into the Disney Plus menu and eventually into the She-Hulk writer's room. What is going on? Then eventually meet with the head of Marvel who has... What is going on? Oh, that hurt oh. a little bit. That laugh hurt. Oh, I'm so oh, sorry. It fuck. hurts to laugh. That was a good laugh, though. <laughs> was, what is going on? I love the straight man reaction to yeah. this whole thing. What is going on? Then eventually meet with the head of Marvel, who, as it turns out, is just this creatively bankrupt robot algorithm making formulaic decisions based on what it thinks is popular. Kind of hurtful. And so she's getting <laughs> him to solve the few problems that were actually happening in the show, and then we're pretty much done. So this is just pointing out that the right wasn't very good make it better in some way? God, I hope so. Do you think we risk making any future She-Hulk or even Marvel projects less captivating by having a super meta character that can literally change the script of the shows and movies she's in? I don't think you could ever go too meta, sir. Isn't that right, future me who's <laughs> editing this video? Uh, you know, I'm, that's a great question, but again, I'm not, like, I'm just filming myself pretending to edit this video. You know, I'm not actually editing this right now. Oh, maybe we should check with the comments section of this video. I mean, what do you guys think? down there in YouTube comment section. Is it possible to get too meta? Super easy. Barley and inconvenience. <laughs> right, okay, that's pretty much all they say down there, I think. So anyway, what do you think? Why'd you just zone out for like 30 seconds? So anyway, what do you think? I mean, it sounds like a pretty good time. I just feel like it's missing a little something to make sure that people tune in. I've got just the thing. 
Yeah, I feel like the Daredevil cameo was one of the main reasons why people stayed for so long. Yeah, well, or I, mean, they the put it, I mean, they put it way at the end of the show just to keep you there. Yeah. To keep you coming back. Like, they had no confidence that if they had put him earlier and then he disappeared, then no one would have come back. It was a smart marketing move for sure to tease and reveal that Daredevil was going to be in the show because, like, you included a lot of people were like that's a big draw I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to articulate this thought never have i been so aware of the writers of something than this show true the thing that annoys me is that they think they're so good I, that's what annoys the shit out of me for some reason you know it's like there's so many directors who are like ah i just have to abandon this and then they're like hoping people like it not really sure if it's good or not but at least they were passionate I didn't get that sense from them. I got the sense from them that they were very full of themselves. And they think angry. And, and angry, and they think they're so fucking smart and clever, and like, ha, 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 look at these guys, we're getting them all riled up. It's like, is that really the only mission with this story? Like, you just wanted to get people riled up? I understand that there's like the whole, and I mean this in the nicest way possible, there's a whole feminist agenda thing, right? I use that in lieu of a better phrase. I don't necessarily mind that. I come to expect it when it comes to Marvel. It's just that when you add on top of it this sort of pointing the finger at these guys it's just that kind of annoys me it, it doesn't feel inclusive yeah. i mean yeah some of the things they were pointing out i'm like yeah interesting points definitely see that in the real world and all but somehow when you when you make it about making fun of other people or being mean spirited yeah. in a way like how are you supposed to get people on side well that's the point isn't it it, it, it doesn't care about getting you on their side and that's I think that's a big issue with today's discourse is that people don't really care about trying to get you into the conversation. They care about shutting you out. Yeah, you know. it just feels it just feels so awful to me. And even even watching this, this was a really great pitch meeting. But th there were definitely times where I was just kind of like cringing inside because he's saying a lot of like very spot on things. He's making some really keen observations, and it it's like it breaks my heart because I did want She Hulk to be really good, and it just ended up being just okay, meh, even with some like really funny moments and mm -hmm. some standout characters. Yeah. It's, it's just wild how how much toxicity it kind of brought out in the whole internet sphere. I think that's what they wanted though. I mean, it got people talking about it. I don't think it was for the right reasons, but no. it got people talking about it, watching it, either because it was, they were hate watching or because they were, there's like, it's threefold, right? There's either hate watching, love watching, or they're just trying to get through it so they can keep up with what's going on in the story. You guys, thanks so much for hanging out. Hopefully you enjoyed some of this discourse. Uh, do subscribe, bell icon, all notifications, vote this up, please. I'm Javi Koei, this is... Acharika. Peace out.